put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. House of the Dead 3 for the Wii. Game review. So, remember Curian, that mad scientist in the first game who was you know, behind all this death and devastation? He was originally a concerned father who wanted to save his son as he sat over his bed and talked to him reassuringly about how he was going to remove the barrier between life and death and the son just kind of stared off into space with a gaping open mouth, blank expression, you know, the, the look of someone who's just watched a Twilight movie. Yeah, don't you just love retcons? I didn't see that in his character in the first game at all, but anyway, the story actually makes the least amount of sense of any of the three. That's really all I can, well, almost all I can give away. G from the first game. Yeah, he still, we still have no idea what that actually stands for. He's sent along with someone we've never met or heard of before into, it, it's, you know, the game takes place 20 years after the Curian incident, and yeah, G and this guy named Dan or something, it doesn't matter, he's killed really quickly, are, yeah, trying to stop, you know, another zombie outbreak in this really tall building. It looks like a Transylvanian castle, only, you know, technology-ish, and, you know, stitched together from stuff you found at the scrapyard for some reason. So they, you know, go missing on this mission and the AMS decide to wait for two weeks because, you know, otherwise you're just not entirely sure that they're for sure dead. Until, and then they send Rogan, also, you know, from the first game, returning. Didn't G die in the second one? Anyway. That's not a spoiler for the second one. It happens in the first ten minutes. Anyway, him and G's daughter, who is not only, you know, who doesn't just have a letter for a name, who's named Lisa. Yeah, they go in after him and, or after them, I guess. They don't know that Dan's dead. We do. And yeah, that's that really is all I can give away. The story is, again positively nonsensical. In fact, this is the worst of the three. Although, to be fair, this is the one that actually sort of has an arc and character development, I guess you could call it that. I mean, it's bland and see-through, but I guess it, you know, it can pass for character development, sure. You know, there's this thing about Lisa you know, ah, oh, she never had that good of a relationship with G because he was always gone and Rogan talking about, ah, oh, we always risk our lives. And yeah, so, you know, it has that kind of generational thing that, you know, it would appear to me at least that the Japanese have a sort of fixation with, you know, seen that in several animes as well. So, yeah, not big on the whole Asian cinema. It's just not my taste. No problems with that. Just anyway, I'm gonna get into. I'm I'm gonna try to talk about the positives before I go into the negatives because, yeah, I can tell you right now, this is at least to me the worst of these games. I'll admit I haven't played the fourth, so I can't you know. Yeah, can't comment on that one. But of the four that I have played, this trilogy and then you know Overkill. This is by far the worst. Anyway, this does have the best graphics of this of the trilogy. You know, and 
they look less goofy, which is not to say that they act less goofy, the zombies, that is. But they do actually look, you know, before they looked kind of sad or they had that kind of vacant expression. And that works for zombies. I'd, I'd say it really worked, especially in the first one, as, you know, making them creepy. But in this one, they look kind of vicious. They look like they're out to get you, you know. There's this there's sort of a hint of intelligence. And that, you know, that isn't bad. And it's at least, you know, three games in, you maybe want to go in a slightly different direction, obviously, you know. And they sort of do, and it's not too bad. The... Now, we, along with the new direction in that regard, we also get, you know, plus, there are tons of different types of zombies in this one. I don't think there were quite this many. I think this has as many types of zombies as the first and second combined. Now, along with that, you know, new step in a you know, different direction, we also get a shotgun instead of just a, you know, regular handgun, although unfortunately, you know, while that does mean that it can now sort of hit in a little bit of a spread, the zombies are extremely powerful. This you know, They're strong enough that they, you know, they don't die from it that quickly. So, yeah, that is a bit on the annoying side. So, you know, it's not that huge of a improvement in that regard, but, you know, at least it's a shotgun, and, you know, and this time you can actually see it when they reload, which is kind of cool. And, don't worry, it reloads and shoots much faster than a real-life shotgun, so, you know, no worries in that regard. The voice acting is a bit better, although there are still a couple of weird line readings, and the dialogue itself is still just off the charts. You know, at least, again, at least this time, it sort of has, you know, there's an ongoing conversation between Lisa and Rogan, and it does sort of tell you who they are and what has happened to, you know, yeah, there's actually, you know, it's not just weird fortune cookie advice and one-liners, or at least, you know, the outside of, you know, fighting the bosses, that is. But yeah, still a few odd line readings, like, there. I believe they only say what once in this, and, you know, in the second one it sounded like a, what, what, what did I do wrong now? In this one, it sounds kind of like they're on the phone with someone and they, you know, the, the signal's going out or something. It's like, what, what, I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I can't hear what you're saying, you know. It's not a, you know, I'm not that much of an actor anyway. It's not like a, you know, what is that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think that is about the extent of the positive. I'm trying to, I'm going to try to start in the small with the negative. For one thing, this is way too bleak and the Limiting of it to one location is just really dull. It it gets really yeah. It's a very very repetitive and not very engaging game. You know, it's exciting, sure. I'll get to the difficulty anyway. In the first game, it was also kind of just essentially one location, but you know, a house, which you know. That one is the one where it makes sense. I guess you could call the one in this a house, but no, it that doesn't make sense because it's it's a building. It's not a house. It's it's a tall building. You know, it's scrapyard of the dead. Building made from scrap iron of the dead. Anyway, the first one, it was basically just one house, but there's a basement to that house, there's a sewer under that house, there's the garden outside of that house. There is plenty of stuff to, you know, keep you interested. There's no... it doesn't look like the same thing over and over. This, you know, you start outside the scrapyard building, then once you're in, you're just... you're in, and there's nothing, there's no change, you know, there are a couple of slight you know, variances on the, you know, you go through a biological laboratory. There are, there's, there's a parking basement or something, but that's really, you know, and, and do those sound that, well, biological laboratory, it could be better, I would say, though, in this game, but 
does a parking basement sound like that interesting of a place to go? You know, and I think you actually visit several. So, yeah, I don't know if they were just running out of material. And with that, I nicely segue into the bosses where they definitely ran out of material. I think they just gave up at this point. I, one boss appears two or three times. You know, that's supposed to, like, pass for, you know, instead of making up new bosses. And the movement pattern and the basic kind of just how they approach him, it's the one good boss from the second game. They just, they reskinned him. I think that's all it is. He, yeah, he, and they messed him up completely. In the second game, he's the best thing about the game. In this, it's practically blasphemy compared to the, yeah, the, the second game. It's just, you know, I get that people like that boss, you know, who wouldn't, but they just mess him up completely. And now he's like a parking guard. What? what a security guard. A, a zombie security guard. Supposed to keep, keep people out. That's not, you know... I'm giving a bit of background on him, but... Or details on him, but yeah. He's actually the first boss, so it's not really a spoiler. There's one that sort of moves like a monkey. And I guess that's... I could see that as being creepy, sure. <laughs> yeah, more details on that in a little bit. Then there's like a, a plant thing, and that's where they actually do sort of, you know, it's not actually too bad, because the plant thing, it has these tentacles that go, and, and they won't just go straight at you, they will like, you know, go in loops across the screen direct, you know, in loops across the screen, eventually getting to you, and you have to shoot them, you know, a bunch of times before they get to you. That is kind of cool. That's the one thing about the bosses that is kind of cool. And the final one, not only is he one of the easiest ones, he's clearly cribbed from earlier bosses. I'm not going to give away which it is, but as soon as you see him, if you play just one of these games, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've played any other of the first two games, yeah. Clearly, they just... And again, I don't know why. And, you know, the designs of them are not necessarily too bad. The, the plant one, especially with the tentacles, that's, you know, kind of cool. And the monkey-ish one, he has these sort of you know, Freddy Krueger glove fingers kind of thing. And he has like a mask on his face. And yeah, that's not too bad. But this is, you know, the real big problem with them, other than what everything I've just mentioned, is they are way too freaking tough. It just, it takes forever to take one of them out. And the, you know, the, the tasks you have to do to take them out are sometimes just infuriating, frustratingly, monitor through the window, difficult. Just nigh on impossible. That's in fact a good term for this game and its difficulty. Impossible. Nearly impossible. You know, and it's not, you know, I can complete this game. I've done it a ton of times, but... Every single time, it feels like it's impossible. And it's not the kind of, oh, this is going to be, you know, this is going to take everything I've got kind of impossible. It's just the, the kind of, I'm just going to give up right now because this is impossible. Impossible. You know. And you realize this a couple of seconds into the game. You know, because they're just... One of the levels is literally called Sensory Chaos. That should have been the title of the game. You know, they're just constantly throwing junk at you and expecting you to sort of try to keep up. Handsome John, Handsome, Handsome Tom of the Game Heroes, you know, that guy with the glasses, that whole thing, once described this series as it eats your quarters. With this game, I can see his point. You know, playing this in the... I think most of the money they made off this game was you know, getting compensation from the players who got so frustrated that they smashed the screen in the arcade. Because it, this is just... Yeah. Anyway. Both the bosses and the regular enemies, 
you know, way too fast, way too tough, you know, one slightly interesting thing that I forgot to mention before about the zombies is now you can actually shoot them so that they'll fall down and they will actually try to get back up, you know, where before it was kind of, you know, but yeah, that's slightly interesting. But yeah, the, the regular zombies, they take forever to go down. And again, you have a shotgun. Why is this, this difficult to blow them apart, you know? The violence itself, not that good looking, you know? It's maybe a little better than the second one, but it's still just, it's nowhere near as cool as the first one or Overkill, you know? Now... This one boasts that it has, you know, branching, you know, you can go different paths. <laughs> yeah. The first level, you get to choose which direction you want to go to head up to the big building. Other than that, the branching, you know, paths amount to, once you've completed the first level, you're inside an elevator. Then there are three different floors to go to, and you're gonna have to go to all three. It's just the order in which you go to them that you get to choose. That's literally it. One more thing I did... Well, actually, it goes nicely into the bad. The... They do sort of try to make this cinematic, but... It just doesn't really work out. It's nowhere near as good as the first one. Part of what works so well with the first one is that when you can't hit a zombie, you can sort of tell why. There's not a lot of time where you can't hurt a zombie or a boss enemy and you're wondering why. You know, let's say you're shooting at something and it's not taking any damage. And that's part of what I love about the first game, you know, that it has a proper logic. It's not just video game logic where, oh, okay, it's, you know, I can't harm it right now because it's a video game and doesn't have to make sense. I hate that kind of thinking. In, yeah, in that, if you can't hurt it, if it's a boss room, you might be shooting it at the wrong place. If it's a regular enemy, it's probably covering itself with either the armor plating some of them have or like axes or, you know, whatever weaponry they're carrying. In this one, some of the zombies actually do, you know, clothes lines. You know, so so they're, they're wrestlers now and, you know, they'll carry like a big, I guess it's like a steel, what's it called? I don't remember the word. Let's just go with a 2 by 4 uh, Yeah, so they're wrestlers now, apparently. But yeah, in this, you know, yeah, a bunch of the time, you can't quite figure out why you're not able to hit, you know, or hurt the enemy. You know, you're still shooting at its weak spot, but yeah, nothing's happening. Now, the... And... And a couple of the things are just, they just take away from the fear factor of the game. At one point you run between the legs of a boss enemy. Who the, who does that? Who, you know, though, that takes stones. That takes serious gall. And they get away with it. Anyway, one more thing that, yeah, it actually goes nicely into the negative category as well. Another new thing that they do in this is that you're now, there are no civilians in this game. You know, I guess there's, you know, no one is actually, I don't know, I guess, yeah, no, no people are left inside this huge, excuse me, building. Or they died in the two weeks. So, to have that sort of thing where you, excuse me, can earn life ups by shooting you know, by, by saving someone. This time, yeah, the, the, the story mode actually, remember how in the second one some of the lines were the same, even if there was only one person, so it would be like the person was talking to himself and referring to himself as if there were several there, like he's Venom or, you know, has a multiple personality disorder or something. In this one, there are just two characters constantly running around, so, you know, regardless of your, if you're playing two players, 
Capcom. I guess in this you can sort of forgive it because, you know, otherwise you couldn't have the character development and story and such, and I don't know how they would have really fixed it, you know, but I do still give the first one props for at least, you know, writing it so loosely that it works if there's one or works if there's two, you know. Anyway, yeah, you're now rescuing your partner in, you know, in, in place of, you know, saving civilians. And, again, this is, you know, an interesting enough idea, and again, you know, how are there always civilians, you know, it, it made sense in the first and the second, because in the first, is I guess they're, like, researchers for Curian, and the second one, you know, it's the people of the city being attacked. In this one, that wouldn't really have made sense, so I'm glad that they did make that decision, at least they realized that some of it, with some of it, that it didn't make sense. But, Again, it's nearly impossible. You'll, you know, hardly ever manage to save the other. But, yeah. With all that said about the difficulty setting, you know, there are, of course, several difficulty settings, and you can lower the difficulty setting, although it's still just, you know, it's still frustratingly difficult, and just generally not enjoyable. You know, that's really... One thing is difficult games, but the game is just not that entertaining throughout, really. And though you can, you know, I, sh I should maybe talk briefly about the playability of this nearly unplayable game. Did I mention that the hit detection is apparently off because sometimes you will literally bullseye the boss enemy in the weak spot and it won't count it, so sometimes that's you know, off. Anyway, you know, with the, the others you've got, you know, in addition to arcade mode, which is, you know, in all of these, there's original mode and, you know, the first and the second have boss mode, the second and typing of the dead have these, like, you know, what's it called, like, <sighs> training kind of mode, you know, this one, arcade mode, this thing called time attack, which is nearly impossible because it expects you to kill the zombies almost faster than is even possible. And, you know, it, it's like the first Max Payne game with New York Minute. You know, you just, every time you kill, you get a couple of extra seconds, and yeah. I'm not sure New York Minute was entirely possible to complete either, but I recall it as being more fun than this. Now, the final thing you can unlock of additional modes in this... And by the way, this game, they actually realized that it was so difficult that one of the things they did to try to make it less difficult is you can now have unlimited credits, you know, so that the game is essentially impossible to avoid beating. You know, it's it just... If you, if you hang in there for long enough... By the way, the game takes roughly 45 minutes to complete, like, the second one. Yeah, if you just hang in there for long enough, you will eventually complete it if you, you know, don't say any time, life's too short. Now, the other thing they did to try to counter how difficult it was. There's this thing called Extreme Mode. That's It's the last thing you unlock, and... It's the other, it, it literally is extreme, it's the, it's just the opposite extreme, it's the other end of the spectrum, really. You know, either the game is nearly impossible or it's, it's just way too easy, because extreme mode, while it is, I believe it's like the highest difficulty setting or something. And I, I don't recall if there's something about that you can only play it as one player, I don't remember, anyway. The thing that is really different about Extreme Mode, that, you know, you just can't get in Arcade Mode even by adjusting the rules, is this feature, I don't remember what it's called, but basically, you know, when you reload. By the way, I mentioned that the second one, you know, you can't really aim off to the sides, you know, or might try to reload. In this one, it especially does that, and it's, you know, it's especially horrible when you're fighting off zombie birds. Anyway. In this one, yeah, the, in addition to the regular reload, you can also, in extreme mode, press A, and it will 
sort of hit, you know, in front of you with the shotgun. Now this entire move, in addition to reloading your gun, can harm enemies and it takes about one full second from start to finish. And if you time it right, you know, do, do note that once you've clicked it in you know, that second, you know, you can't use it like twice in quick succession to, you know, if you time it slightly wrong, you know, or something, or you just want to use it twice in quick succession, it's not going to work for the second one. Anyway, what it does, it harms whatever zombie is close enough, and that, you know, is regardless of if there's one zombie or four, or even if it's a boss enemy. And it blocks their attacks, and yes, even for boss enemies. Yeah, for this second or so, you know, but yeah, again, you do have to time it. But yeah, that actually makes you at times nearly impossible to hit, hit, you know, depending on how good your timing is, of course, but if your timing isn't good, you're, you're really out of luck playing a Tales of the Dead game. Yeah, that just, that completely takes the, you know, that's, that was their idea for trying to even it out, for trying to make it fair or, you know, playable. And, yeah, it just pushes it off into the other the end of the spectrum. It makes that, you know, far too easy. But, yeah, I think that's everything that there is to say about the game. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.